Hi, hello, welcome again. Uh, before we start the actual uh, about the schematic and troubleshooting techniques, just uh, a quick summary of this. Any TPS sensor, mass airflow sensor has three wires, as you can see from this textbook. Obviously, one has to be a reference voltage. That means that it gets the voltage from the computer. The second one is a ground. And the third is called the wiper. The wiper is the one that moves, the movable one. Now, when you're going to see this one, the B+, plus we call it, it might be 12 volts, it might be 5 volts. This computer over here will feed this 5 volts. How do you know? A computer gets 12 volts. A resistor is internal. It's inside of the computer. This is the computer. Therefore, we lost 7 volts to this resistor. That's the choice of the computer. Either it could give us 12 volts or 5 volts. So, in this case, in TPS, like we just said, anything with three wires, <clears throat> the first one, you have to have a voltage through it. More, the, more or less the time is that you're going to have 5 volts as a reference. We call that a reference. Not a B+, plus, but a reference voltage. A ground, the signal that comes back to the computer is the middle one from the wiper. <clears throat> so, therefore, it'll give it a 5 volts or 12 volts, and it'll take back the signal, the data, back to the computer. If this does not give the 5 volts, no, no signal back. <clears throat> so, this depends on this. Let's go to now to troubleshooting. <clears throat> one time I, uh, we were talking about this one. Let me find. We were discussing diagrams. Uh, I was left with a comment from someone, a very observative comment. When it comes to accessories, you have an advantage of troubleshooting. Why? Because you usually have more than one accessory. When it comes to the lighting systems, you usually have parking lights on the right, the left, the brake lights, right and left, reverse lights, right and left, power windows, driver's side, passenger side. So that alone is a hint of troubleshooting and will cut down your troubleshooting time. For example, if both windows in your car do not work, you have to find something that is common to both. If one window works, then at least you know Maybe it's a motor related to that or a switch related to that window. It has nothing to do with the other window. Let's start with this now, applying that theory. As I was asked in the comment, you have two lights over here. Let's quickly go through it. Okay, this is a good diagram. As you see over here, there's, there's a fuse over here. Do we have to start from the top? Can we start from ground? Can we start from the bulbs? <clears throat> we can start anywhere in a schematic. Where you choose to start from the schematic is in your judgment. So if I'm, looking, if I'm looking to analyze how this works, I will look for key components. Key components in this case are the lights themselves. If there's a relay, I'll look for a relay. In this case, there is no relay. There's a switch. That's also an important part that I will concentrate on. The fuses, the wiring, the grounds are last. We're not concerned about that. They don't play a vital role in our analyzing. Now, <clears throat> taking that into consideration, we start from the fuse because we have to make our way down from the top to the bottom to see how these are lit. That's why I started from the top in this case. Now, again, 12 volts here, 15 amp fuse over here. We have it going through a wire, a, a purple and orange wire. In this schematic, it's not really a schematic, it's a textbook diagram to show you. You can see it's striped. So it has two colors. I wish the real schematics would have that, but obviously they don't. So this is two colors, as you can see over here. Going to a connector, C156. Now, this is a manual. Transmission, we go this path. We want the automatic transmission, we go this path. Next, if we do go down 
this automatic transmission. Now we have to select the type of vehicle that we have. And you see this many, many times. Do we have a Bronco or do we have a Ranger? Do we have a Honda? Do we have a Toyota? Do we have a, a Corolla? Do we have a Camry? You see this many, many times. Depending on what you have. Let's say I have a Bronco automatic transmission. I go over here through the wire, C-156. I come down here. Again, this is the same wire, purple, orange. I go through the switch, a backup lamp switch. Close with transmission in reverse. This is obviously, once you put in reverse the gear shift, the selector, you're activating the switch. Only in that position. Current flows through here, then comes out this black pink wire over here. Like we said, since we have a Bronco, we're not going to go in this direction. This only has to do with a Ranger. We're going to go in this direction. This direction, through this, again, black pink wire, through this connector, C118. Again, same wire color. And we're going to go through, S means a splice. That means you should expect, when you see a splice, two wires or more over here. And one for here. So one for the right, one for the left. See, LH is the left, RH is the right. And it has to go to where? A ground. It goes through a splice. Here's a splice. It goes through a splice here. Goes through a connector. Goes through another splice. Goes through another connector. And finally, a splice finally to ground. That's that one. And the other one is almost the same thing. A splice, a connector, a splice splice and splice and connect a uh, ground so they both go they meet the common point to this is the ground <clears throat> now again both lights are out i go in reverse how do i know both lights are are, are out in reverse <clears throat> if i'm on if i have to be in the car to do it a good way they always look back i always go back look at the reflection on the car behind me if i see my lights i'm good if i don't see any lights on the on the, on the one uh, behind me <clears throat> not good so therefore go over here what will knock out the first thing you should come into your mind we have a problem and that's why i opened the video with <clears throat> when you have accessories you have more than one item if only the left is out fine i'm only isolating my problem to this one if only the right is out i'm only isolating my problem to this one great we know it's a bulb right or it could be this wire or this wire fine can if this light is out the right one is out can it be can it be the switch is bad <clears throat> no why because the switch is responsible for both lights if this switch was bad it would knock out both lights if this fuse was bad <clears throat> if the fuse was bad let's say the right is out can the fuse be bad no why because the fuse is also common to the other one if the fuse was bad both of them would be knocked out so therefore <clears throat> we're coming to troubleshooting that it would take something to knock out both so we look for something common to both he's common he's common <clears throat> the fuse obviously what else is common what's common from here to here or here here what's common from here to here is this wire if this wire broke or this connector is bad that would knock out both now we come over here what would knock out both over here from here from the switch to here to the splice this wire if this wire or this connector c118 is broken it will knock out both or the splice has a problem it will knock out both so therefore you always look for something common what else can it be? What else? We said there's a bunch of things that's common. As far as components, the fuse, the switch, correct? As far as the wiring, this wire, this wire, this wire, this wire. What else? How about the ground? The ground is common to both. If there's a problem with the, with the ground, let's say it has high resistance. 
I'm going to have a high voltage over here. I'm going to have a higher than normal voltage, put it that way. That's going to affect it also. Look for something that will affect both. Okay? If this was a, a, a power windows, if this was right, if this was passenger, this was driver. Okay? Both windows on both sides cannot go down. Let's say the passenger and the driver. Would it, be able, would it be the fuse? Yes. Would it be the wiring? Yes. Would it be the switch? Yes. Would it be the individual motor? No, because both cannot go down. Therefore, you look for something. It's called lucky for something common. Once you see something common, that's it. That knocks out about 50% of your troubleshooting. Let's go to a ranger. Let's make it simpler. Again, both lights are out. What do I do? First thing. First thing come to your mind, where what is common to both? What will knock out both? As far as as far as fuses, if fuse this fuse is bad, will it knock out both? Yes. What else? Your next your next guess should be the switch. What else? Your next guess should be a ground. What about wiring? What will knock out both in a ranger? If this is a, a Camry, a Corolla. A GM, whatever it is, what will knock out both? Your answer should be this one. Your answer should be this one. Your answer should be this one. One more example. What will knock out these lights out here in a Bronco? What will knock out these lights in a Ranger? Think about it. All lights are out. Of course, you don't have two vehicles, but let's make it a little more complex. A Bronco doesn't have two lights out in reverse. A Ranger doesn't have two, two in reverse. What will knock out both? If you said this switch, you're wrong. If you said this switch, you're wrong. If you said this wire, you're wrong. If you said this wire, you're wrong. If you said this, this ground over here, G200 and G200, if they go to the same point, you're right. They're the same point. What else? The fuse. Why would I say that? What is common to all four? We started this video. What's common to these two? Right? We advanced ourselves, and now I'm giving you an example of trying to make it more complex, of trying to, to delve into analyzing schematics. All four are out. If this was out, it would only affect this one, the Bronco. If this was out or broken, it would only affect what? The Ranger. <clears throat> so therefore, can't be these two. What will affect and knock all of them out? This one and what else? What's the next answer should be? This one or this connector because this goes to all four. If you get said this, you're on, a way, you're on your way to electronics troubleshooting you did very well if not go over it and see this is the best way to do to do things i didn't even have to put a, a, a multimeter as soon as i said as soon as i make the statement bronco reverse lights both don't work both don't work right you're gonna say maybe it's a bulb no first they come to your mind a fuse and this and this then you work with a meter. Anyway, please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, and go to my other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Please look at the videos that I made about how to measure cables, not voltage-wise of battery cables, but resistance. That is a great method to measure corrosion on the cables. Measure, if you measure good resistance on the cables, you, do not, you will not have a voltage drop. Okay? Across them. Anyway, please subscribe to my other channel and please leave a like if you if, if this was informative. And hopefully, uh, hopefully um, you'll understand it better as we go along. Thanks for watching.